And actually, we're here to announce very quickly that uh, Tatenda Gibson will be the next speaker. He will be talking about CDK 101. So he will actually give you a bit of an overview of you know, what are the various deployment frameworks on, uh, uh, on, on to deploy your applications. So I suggest uh, we switch over right to that presentation and you'll see me and Eric in a bit to, uh, for further, uh, further information as well. So enjoy the talk. Here we go. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone is well. Thank you for joining me for this session. I'll be speaking briefly on AWS Cloud Development Toolkit. Uh, I think that is a mouthful. So I'm just going to call it CTK throughout this whole session. So I've been building uh, on AWS and working with AWS services for over a year now. And uh, I'm a huge serverless fan. I'll speak briefly about that in a moment. Um, so uh, CDK is uh, actually a huge topic. It's not something I can talk about like uh, in 10 minutes, but since this is a lightning talk, uh, let's see what I can do. So yeah, a few things that you are going to go through. Uh, an overview, uh, why CDK, a quick comparison with SIM, uh, and then I'll share some few steps. So uh, I, I will assume that if you are already building on AWS or any other cloud provider, you've already uh, adopted some form of infrastructure as code. Uh, the most uh, popular frameworks that you've sort of uh, been the standard have been uh, cloud formation, which I think is getting slightly overtaken by HashiScope's Terraform. I know it's opinionated and stuff. Uh, when I started building on AWS, I was probably doing what uh, almost everyone getting started does, like uh, by clicking around the console to get uh, resources deployed uh, and stuff, right? I'm saying the word stuff a lot. <laughs> However, due to the fact that uh, this can be very tedious to carry out a repetitious task and you might easily run into a lot of configuration drift, I uh, opted uh, and uh, ended up using cloud formation. Then uh, later on, uh, I, I moved on to SAM, uh, the serverless application model. I'll briefly hint on what this is for those that do not know. Then uh, recently, that's when I started using CDK. So uh, CDK was uh, released in 2019 by AWS. Uh, it is an open source multi-language framework for modeling and defining your cloud infrastructure using uh, your favorite programming language or uh, a programming language that you are familiar with, if I may say. Uh, however, currently it is generally available in Java, Script, TypeScript, Python, Java, as well as uh, .NET or C Sharp. Okay, uh, I think that is straightforward. Why CTK? Well, I think <laughs> my first point is probably going to get me in trouble, but uh, cloud formation equals to pain. Well, I think I think this is the, probably one of the primary reasons uh, why CDK has become popular very late. I think uh, the, uh, I think the fact that it's sometimes very difficult to work with cloud formation is what has led to the genesis of CDK uh, as a possible successor of CDK, and that is that that's in quote. Working with cloud formation, I think it's great if you're working with a small set of services with a small team uh, or as an individual developer. But uh, CDK uh, cloud formation, I mean, heavily relies on markup configuration with, uh, with either JSON or YAML. Uh, and if these files become large, it's very difficult to manage and share across teams. And uh, not to mention there's absolutely zero abstraction or zero to nothing in terms of abstraction with uh, cloud formation. Uh, CDK accelerated onboarding to AWS. I think since CDK uses a familiar programming language like uh, 
common languages like JavaScript, Python, and TypeScript, etc. It's a lot easier for developers or even aspiring devs to grasp concepts as it's just code. I know if you are just maybe getting started with AWS, uh, these things can be a bit hard, especially like uh, figuring out uh, the services. There's like a gazillion services there, and at the same time, you have to go out and learn cloud formation or HCL, which have a steep learning curve, if, I'm, if I might say. Uh, it, it also gives you the ability to define your resources at a higher level of abstraction using constructs. I'll explain this uh, in the next slide. You'll see what I mean. Uh, okay, so uh, here is a basic outline of a CTK application. Um, I just picked off this diagram of this link here from the documentation. So, uh, like I mentioned, construct before, uh, there are three types of constructs basically low level constructs, high level constructs, CTK pattern constructs. Um, I don't have time to really go through them all, but the general idea is that constructs are just basic building blocks of CTK application and they can represent a single resource, for example, uh, an SQS here or a Lambda. So uh, this diagram basically shows us how CTK in action works. I would have opted for a DEM, but uh, time does not allow, right? So we move on to stacks. These are so stack is just a basic unit of deployment or resources within uh, the scope of a stacks are uh, either directly or indirectly provisioned. There's a single unit, right? And then uh, the app, uh, the application itself. Again, here, yeah, as I mentioned, the idea uh, is that the, the stack, the stacks go on to make up the app. So. Uh, this diagram here really is kind of uh, an outline of the resource hierarchy of a CTK, uh, of a CTK application. So after you write your application logic code here to define your resources and run a command like CTK deploy, CTK goes out to synthesize this to a cloud formation template and then cloud formation goes out to build and deploy your resources, right? Uh, and uh, so you're taking advantage of your favorite programming language as well as still getting power of cloud formation as a provisioning engine. So uh, here is uh, just a quick uh, comparison with SAM. Like I said, I'll talk about SAM. Well, the idea with SAM is that SAM is just an additional layer of abstraction on top of cloud formation. Yeah, that enables you to, conf uh, to accomplish more with a fewer lines of code. Unlike uh, like cloud formation, it makes a lot of decision on, on your behalf. And I, I think it works based for serverless applications that don't follow common patterns, that follow common patterns, uh, if I might say, actually. This common pattern might be a Lambda, API Gateway, Dynamo, DB, etc. It also lets you test your application locally using the same CLI, uh, which uh, mirrors uh, Lambda execution environment. So uh, just basically YAML and JSON. Uh, I think I've explained this slide basically. So here's uh, some simple code just to compare the two. Um, here's the same template here. Uh, it's basically going out to create an API gateway and uh, a Lambda function. Uh, it's not that complicated, but it's a bit easy. But I want what I want you to show you is uh, this VPC. This is like my favorite CDK construct deploy because uh, just with this one line, it goes to generate about 200, 200 plus lines of cloud formation. To create a VPC using CTK, you only need like to initialize your project. And then this one line of code goes on uh, to create resources like the VPC, public subnets, root tables, internet gateway and NAT gateway and, and uh, probably other like less exciting stuff, right? Uh, here's an example of creating a Dynamo DB with SIM. A SIM, you just need to go and line, uh, write this one line. Uh, it's quite simple and straightforward. Whereas with CTK, you need to go and write out all this code. So um, I think uh, I think CTK is a huge leap uh, in the infrastructure as code uh, paradigm. Uh, being able to test and source control your infrastructure, not to say that it's the panacea of all your infrastructures called problems, but I think uh, it quite really excels in deploying multiple services that 
need to communicate with one another like a cluster containers etc uh it may if maybe you are building serverless application perhaps i would say maybe go for same is a good choice in my own opinion so far i i really can't wait to see what innovations are coming to ctk considering how rapid the community is growing so um to sum up i wrote a quick article here on how to build an ecs cluster which i think is more detailed and uh, explained if and i explained a few things in detail here more uh here's the link here i'll try to get one of the organizers to share this in the chat section besides uh that you can find me here at tt underscore underscore m uh if you want to chat on twitter give me feedback questions or anything uh so uh thank you